What's going on, guys? Graham, Jesus, and Matthews here with Bleach Report. Today, we're talking to WWE legend Rey Mysterio, ahead of his move to Raw, coming out of the uh, 2021 WWE Draft, starting this Monday on USA Network, Monday Night Raw, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. Ray, my man, how you doing? Very good, Graham. Thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. And like I said, you've been now moved to the Raw roster, and it feels like every year since you've come back to the company, back in 2018, you're from Raw to SmackDown, SmackDown to Raw, back on Monday nights. Uh, you've been a partial, you know, you've been a part of the SmackDown brand more than you have Raw over the course of your career. Are you more partial to one brand or the other at this point in your career? I was actually just about to tell you that I've, I've always been a, a blue color, man. SmackDown has always been the brand for me for some reason. Uh, you know, uh, it's worked better for me and I've gotten used to uh, the SmackDown brand. But uh, I always like uh, change, you know, and I like to adapt. And especially now with my son kicking off his career, you know, it's going to be exciting. You know, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of talent on Raw right now. And we're looking forward to working with uh, many of those. Yeah, a lot of talent, a lot of fresh faces, both in the tag team division, singles competition, for both of you guys. So it makes for a lot of potential interesting matchups, which we'll get to a little bit later on. But like you mentioned, you've always been a blue brand guy since the start of your career almost 20 years ago in WWE. Uh, but you said you like change. So at this point, every time, every time a draft comes around, since you came back to the company three years ago, you've been drafted every single time. So come the 2021 draft, are you just expecting, all right, I'm headed to Raw at this point? Like, are you already of that mindset? Uh, yes, I think once we got drafted that very night, mm -hmm. you know, I remember sitting down with my son and said, okay, we got to make the best out of this opportunity. And it's almost like a fresh new start for us, you know. Um, obviously, we uh, we became first father and son tag team champions. And uh, that's that's on our, on our review mirror right now, you know, hoping that we can get an opportunity or at least earn an opportunity first to eventually, uh, you know, meet the champions. Yeah, absolutely. RK Bro stole the Raw Tag Team Champions coming out of Crown Jewel yesterday, so that could be a great matchup at some point. And Ray, you've been long enough to know that in the draft, there's been a lot of instances where we see tag team partners split up. So for you, was there ever a chance or a thought, okay, there might be a chance that Dominic and I end up on separate shows? Or was it more of a thing for you that you were adamant that you guys stay together wherever you ended up? No, I think that was uh, definitely up to destiny. Mm -hmm. um, and we did talk about it. I said if we uh, eventually get split up, then, uh, you know, it was meant to be. You go your way, I go mine. And at the same time, you know, it would have given my son some uh, independence and, and for him to grow on his own. Um, you know, uh, pretty much uh, the story that we were telling right before we got drafted to Raw. You know, uh, so it, it, it wasn't in the back of our minds, but it was nothing that we were worrying about. You know, if anything, mm -hmm. it probably would have been good, you know, a change. And you mentioned it right there. I mean, the storyline that you guys have had going on the last couple of weeks. I mean, obviously, Dominic has been linked with you ever since he came into the company about a year ago on a full time basis. And uh, you guys won the tag team titles. You guys have had some issues on TV lately. So thankfully, that story is still, you know, going on, just being kind of drafted as well from Fridays to Mondays. Uh, what have been your thoughts on this recent, you know, storyline working with your son on TV in this capacity? No longer the tag team champions. Uh, he's had some matches against Sammy. You had a match against Sammy recently. We haven't seen on TV lately with all the draft stuff going on right now, but Obviously, come Monday's Raw, we'll probably see the continuation to that. But what have been your thoughts on the ongoing storyline with Dominic on WWE TV? You know, I've been enjoying every moment uh, that I've had a chance to step in the ring with my son. Uh, in the ring and backstage, just interacting has been incredible. Um, it has been uh, almost the rebirth of my career. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I uh, see him. Uh, and I go back and think of my first baby step, you know, in this industry. So uh, I've been enjoying it to the fullest. Um, with the story, you know, uh, hopefully, um, since Sammy is staying on SmackDown, if we do cross paths again, then, uh, you know, uh, we'll bring it back up. But I'm hoping that with this draft over to Raw, that we get a fresh new start and uh, we start looking at, at some opponents on who to face. Yeah, and there's plenty of opponents on Monday nights from Finn Balor, AJ Styles. You got the Street Profits on Mondays as well, RK Bro, Alpha Academy, among many other tag teams and other fresh faces, like I said, in the singles uh, ranks as well. 
Um, and you've talked a lot before, Dominic has as well, that regardless of where it happens, when it happens, a one-on-one -on -one match between you two would be the ultimate goal. And it would be a lot of fun to obviously work with your son, for him to work with his father. It would be awesome. Is that still the end game for you at this point, regardless of what happens with this ongoing story with your son, uh, to have that one-on-one -on -one match, regardless of what that stage looks like? You know, we, we talked about uh, a lot of wrestling as a team before he even stepped in the ring or in a WWE ring, you know, uh, in his training uh, upcoming. And uh, it was something that we envisioned, you know, imagine the day that we get to wrestle together. And then imagine the day when we get to face each other. And as his uh, career took off and, and so fast, you know, uh, that match that we dreamed about of wrestling together happened so fast in the blink of an eye, you know, after his debut mm -hmm. against Seth Rollins. So, um, the, seeing the growth within my son and, and just seeing how attached I've been to him. Um, and I know eventually I got to let him go and, and have him uh, grow on his own. But uh, it would be very, very hard for me to face him, you know, on a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, just, it, it's hard, you know, even, even as a father, when, when Dom and, and my daughter as well were growing up, you know, uh, I was hard on him only when I needed to. And, uh, you know, wasn't the spanking type. Uh, I would just punish him. And that would hurt me. So uh, and I think that all has to do with the amount of time that I spent away from home, traveling, being on the road. You know, when I was home, I wanted to just have quality time with them. So I, I, that's why I see it very hard to eventually, um, you know, have to face my son. Now, if that was destiny, then uh, I will accept it. Mm hmm. And time will tell. We're not going to be getting it anytime soon. Obviously, you guys are still, uh, you know, still a team on Monday night. So maybe for not a little while until much later down the road. But I know Dominic actually mentioned recently, I think he was with uh, Ryan Satin on the Out of Character podcast. Uh, actually, earlier this month, I think he mentioned how like the ultimate goal for him or maybe for you guys both was to take on the mask, take on the name, become Rey Mysterio Jr. A lot like how you became Rey Mysterio Jr. earlier on in your career. Uh, can you confirm that's where you want to see this going as well? Maybe not in, you know, in the immediate future, but down the road, uh, something that you want to see happen with with Dominic taking on the mask, taking on the name a little bit later on, or do you want to see him kind of establish his own identity as Dominic Mysterio? I think he's, he's already established his own identity as Dom mm -hmm. Mysterio. Um, there was a lot expected from uh, the WWE universe on what he could bring to the table. And I think slowly but surely he has been uh, holding up his own, you know, a uh, uh, short little story. When I first started at the age of 14, I thought I was going to get, uh, or put the name Ray Mysterio Jr. right off the back. Now, mm -hmm. it took me three years in order to earn that name until one day my uncle surprised me and granted me the mask with the name Ray Mysterio Jr. So uh, I learned that <clears throat> you have to work for things in life, you know, and that was a perfect example, especially in this industry that, uh, you know, it cost me a lot um, to, to be able to carry the name Ray Mysterio Jr., and it happened, you know, once that happened, it was like a life transformation for me. Um, I felt like everything just was going my way. You know, my career just grew. With Dom, uh, I think eventually uh, there'll be a day where um, I'll be able to, to pass on the torch, pass on the legacy of the mask and have him, um, you know, whether he accepts it or not, you know, the, the hard work um, that he's shown and keeps showing will eventually pay off and hopefully that will turn into me uh, passing the mask on to my son. For sure. And I mean, he's had this opportunity to work with you, a WWE legend, a wrestling legend, and his father on TV for the last year. And and it's extra tough for him, too, because it's happened during a pandemic when there were no fans in the audience for a good solid year and a half. And now uh, you guys are finally having the chance to work together on TV in front of people, which has been awesome. Uh, with Dom's training, was it mostly like a you and Dom working one on one together? Was it kind of a mix of like him working at the performance center, like some of the trainers over there? Or was it like a mix of both? It was, it was actually a mix of uh, several things. Um, I remember the first uh, time, our first day, he stepped into a ring. It was in California, San Diego. And uh, we had some of his godfathers, Conan, uh, Damien, myself, um, you know, and, and we kind of tested the waters with him to see if he had what it, take, what it took to, to uh, be part of, of, of the wrestling world. And the first baby steps that he took, 
I realized right away that there was something special. He was picking up things right away. And then uh, his journey started, you know, went up to, to uh, Florida to train with Jay Lethal. Um, after that, I remember speaking to Jericho, and he said, if you want to get him uh, in, to the right place, send him to Lance's up in Calgary. So he took a, dr- a drive up to, to Calgary, stayed there, and, and did a whole training session uh, with Lance. And then he came back to San Diego and did some training at uh, Level Up Wrestling in, in San Diego. And that has been kind of his journey from the beginning. And, uh, of course, now uh, with him uh, being part of WWE, um, I think his next step is yet to come to eventually take time and, and uh, start going to the Performance Center and learn that WWE stuff. Yeah, for sure. And in time, that's going to be happening. But and I know you've talked a lot yeah. before about, you know, winning the tag titles with Dominic. And we're going back a few years now. And for the fact that it's happened now, uh, especially so earlier this year, so close to Father's Day, which was such a great moment in the feud with Roman, with Dom's involvement as well, was so great. Um, you guys have won the tag team titles, hopefully winning another set of tag team titles on Mondays uh, as part of the Raw roster now as well. Maybe a one-on-one mm-hmm. match at some point down the road. Beyond anything involving Dominic, are there any like items left on your wrestling bucket list that you want to accomplish in WWE or beyond? Or is it just kind of a playing it, taking it by day and seeing it, what happens from there? You know, I think at this point in my career, I am taking it uh, uh, one day at a time, you know, uh, enjoying the, the moments shared in the ring with my son, um, you know, uh, enjoying working new talent, um, like uh, the match that I had uh, against Sammy Zane, mm-hmm. you know, uh, this, that was the first time that we faced uh, one-on-one, you know, and there's so much talent <clears throat> in the WWE roster that um, I still ha- haven't had the opportunity to wrestle on a one-on-one. So, uh, you know, I'm always up to new challenges. And, uh, you know, I, I love taking on the task of, of putting on a good show for the fans, you know, so um, I'm, I'm just one day at a time and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And you're being involved, like you said, with fresh matches almost every week. You face Sammy in the uh, you know opening round of the King of the Ring tournament recently. And now you find yourself on the raw roster. One person I really wanted to see you work with again was Ricochet, the former Prince Puma from Lucha Underground. You guys had a great series of matches over there. He's on SmackDown now, unfortunately. But looking at the raw roster, is there any one name that you know of that's on the show with you that comes to mind as someone that you want to work with? Someone like a Finn Balor for the first time ever or someone that you haven't faced in a while? You, you took the name right out of my mouth. <laughs> I said it before in the past. Uh, Finn Balor is definitely a guy that I would love to step in the ring and uh, do a program with. You know, uh, I think he's an incredible talent, you know, uh, and uh, I think our, our styles clash and we would definitely give something special to remember. Yeah, it would be a fantastic match. And as we wind down here, Ray, my buddy of mine, his name is RJ. He's a huge fan of yours. He's uh, you're like his favorite wrestler. And he was curious. He wanted me to ask uh, when you left or, you know, WCW to WWE towards the end of your WCW run. I know you've talked about it before, uh, the whole unmasking process and whatever. You came to WWE with the mask back on. Uh, was that something that WWE wanted or something that you pushed for to have, you know, to, to put the mask back on? And obviously you've been masked ever since in WWE. Can you talk about that process a little bit? Yeah, of course. It was actually uh, WWE who brought that up, or in this case, Vince McMahon. Um, I remember getting ready to, uh, I was doing my training a week prior to my debut, and I was in OBW, and I uh, forgot who approached me at the time, and they were like, well, uh, the, the company wants to know what type of ring attire are you going to use for next week? And uh, I said, well, what I've been using, you know, I was using like the, the, um, Got sign of the big pop of pump chain around the head, like <laughs> yeah. gladiator chain, and a, and a vest that went along with it, the baggy pants. Mm-hmm. And they were like, well, where's the mask? I said, well, I haven't been wrestling with the mask. No, 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 no. Vince wants to see you with the mask. And I was like, oh, thank God you told me now. Now I got to <laughs> get an outfit made with the mask. So um, that's when I changed my, my whole gear. You know, I was back in WCW. I was using the old school uh, tights where they just stuck to my leg. And uh, when I started with WWE, I started wearing the baggy pants, which was very similar to what I was using prior to WWE uh, when I was unmasked. And I just, I added the mask to it, you know, and that became, uh, you know, historical at that point because that's where Ray Mysterio really kicked off and was put on the map for good with WWE. Yeah, and it's been synonymous with you ever since. Uh, you've cosplayed as superheroes before. Any superheroes you still want to cosplay as going forward? 
Um, I think the one that I haven't done to a team that I'm hoping that uh, the opportunity comes about, mm-hmm. uh, Aquaman. Aquaman is definitely something that, I, that I've been working on. And like I said, I did something uh, a while back, but it didn't turn out the way I was expecting it. So hopefully we can kick that one off. That would be awesome, especially with fans back now, too, so they can appreciate it in person. That would be awesome. And uh, last question for you, Ray. My editor, Eric, is actually a San Diego native as well, so he was very curious. This is a totally random question, but he was curious what your take was on, like, the best taco slash burrito in the San Diego, San Diego area is. I guess it's like a it's a hot-button issue out there, I guess he had said. So any great place in the San Diego area that, to your knowledge, where you can get the best taco or burrito? <laughs> Now, for me, I grew up in San Diego, and you can only imagine going to uh, the high school out there. It mm-hmm. was always Gilberto's Taco Shop nice. when it comes down to burritos. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to tacos, um, I grew up eating tacos down south of, of the border of San Diego and Tijuana, and there's no better taco place than Tacos El Gordo. And that, as a matter of fact, they actually have one in Las Vegas now, actually two of them. Uh, that taste is the same. So if you're ever out in Vegas or in San Diego, hit Tacos del Gordo and have a mulita, a mule, which is off the hook. Oh, that's awesome. I wish I knew that two months ago when I was at SummerSlam in Vegas. I would have picked one up that weekend, but may- maybe the oh, next event. Oh. I know, mon- you know, Money in the Bank is going to be there next summer for uh, Fourth of July weekend. So maybe if I'm out there at that point, I can pick one up. But Ray, this has been awesome, man. Thanks so much for the time. I actually had the chance to meet you at like the Crystal Mall in Waterford, Connecticut when I was like 12 years old. I waited for three hours oh, to meet you God. at a mall. It was an awesome experience. And uh, yeah, that was over a decade ago. Great talking today. I've been waiting for this one for a while. People can actually obviously catch you every Monday night on Raw, 8 p.m. Eastern time on USA Network. Ray, thanks so much for the time, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care.